KSN Sports presents Big 8 Conference Basketball. Tonight's game features the Kansas Jayhawks, 8-3 and in conference play, and in a three-way tie for the top spot. And the Kansas State Wildcats, 7-4 and four in conference. The Cats will be trying to break the Jayhawks' 47-game winning streak at home. It's Big 8 Basketball on KSN Sports. on February 4th when the Hawks met the Cats. It was a lot like a Rocky Balboa, Apollo Creed classic boxing battle. Both sides punching and punching and neither willing to fall. Well, the K-State Cats finally did fall in double overtime, but they're back up again and ready for the rematch. Hello, everybody. Welcome once again to the floor of Allen Fieldhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. Steve Dennis and Ross Dalton and Coach Jack Hartman along with you for the classic friendly neighborhood battle. Let's start with Ross. Ross, talk about KU and K-State, the matchup in general. KU may be a little bit more to lose tonight. Well, there's a lot of emotion in this game for the Kansas Jayhawks. Two seniors, Mark Turgeon and Cedric Hunter, will play their final game here in Allen Fieldhouse, and two streaks on the line. Of course, KU's 47-game home winning streak is on the line. They could tie the Big 8 mark at 48 with a win to 9, and of course, they've beaten the Cats nine straight times. The Jayhawks will be fired sky high, trying to right the ship after losing a big one up in Iowa State and Ames. All right, it's noisy in here already. Let's turn to Coach Hartman. Coach K-State on their side, they've been playing better basketball lately, and nothing they would love better than to end that winning streak for KU. Well, Steve, this is a predictable interstate rivalry where you, you really can't go by form. Things, things happen in these type of emotional games. I think since the first game, when either team could have won the thing in, in regulation time or either team could have won it in the first overtime, that the Kansas State kids have felt they could have won that ball game, and they've looked forward to this one with, with a lot of confidence. They played very well Tuesday night against Oklahoma State. Kansas didn't play well in a very disappointing loss at Iowa State. How those two games are going to affect this event, I don't know, but it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a typical K-State KU game. All righty, the fans are ready, we're ready, so you got to get ready. If it's anything like the first matchup, you better hang on to your hats. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a minute. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the campus of the University of Kansas and to Allen Fieldhouse, the home of the Jayhawks. Here are the starting lineups for tonight's game between Kansas State University and the University of Kansas. First, for the Wildcats. At forward, from Jacksonville, Florida, number 44, Norris Coleman. At forward, from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, number 23, Mitch Richmond. At center, from St. Louis, Missouri, number 32, Charles Bledsoe. At guard, from Kansas City, Missouri, number 14, Will Scott. At guard, from McPherson, Kansas, number 12, Steve Henson. for the Jayhawks of Kansas. At forward from Lawrence, Kansas, number 25, Danny Manning. At forward from Lawrence, Kansas, number 24, Chris Piper. Center from Parsons, Kansas, number 40, Mark Pellock. At guard from Topeka, Kansas, number 11, 
Mark Turgeon. At guard from Omaha, Nebraska, number 22, Cedric Hunter. It doesn't take a genius to realize the excitement is very, very high here at Allen Fieldhouse for another KU-K-State battle. And the backyard battle will begin in just a couple of minutes. Back live to Allen Fieldhouse, Steve Dennison, Ross Dalton, and Jack Hartman coming back to Allen Fieldhouse where Coach, you played a lot of basketball games here. The KU fans gave you a pretty good reception when you came in. Well, Steve, all the time I was coaching, I never realized how much electricity there is in Ahern and or Allen Pilas at these games. But uh, taking this perspective, you can really get the full impact of it. And believe me, it's full of electricity. Now we're about ready to go. You may have noticed in the starting lineups that Mark Turgeon is starting tonight, along with Cedric Hunter as the guards, because it's the last ball game here at Allen Fieldhouse for both of the seniors. And here we go. KU gets the jump, and they're ready to play basketball. K-State out the man-to-man -man defense from the very top of the ball game. Cedric out top to his fellow point guard. So a couple of point guards out there for KU. K-State bringing out Norris Coleman on Cedric Hunter in the early going. Inside the pellet, wide open, two nothing Kansas. The Wildcats opened in a very aggressive man defense and gave KU some problems. They did find Pellick open under the bucket, but it was a hard-earned bucket. This is Bledsoe for the Wildcats. Back out to McPherson product, Steve Henson. Another defensive matchup to watch. Mark Pellick right now is on Norris Coleman. Both teams showing the man-to-man at the outset of the ball game, Mitch Richmond, his first shot is too long, and Danny Manning's got the rebound. KU in transition. Manning to the hoop and the whistle, the first whistle of the ball game, a foul against, I believe, Steve Henson at K-State. Tran transition is a very important part of the Kansas basketball offense. They really are required. Now here they go on a good transition. And they take it right to the hole. Manning was going in there. He happened to get fouled, or he would have scored the basket. They, they are very alert to initiate the transition, and they're very, very skillful with it. Our first foul of the ball game against the freshman, Henson Manning, at the free throw line. Not very many things went well Tuesday night for KU at Ames, Iowa. One thing that did, Danny Manning continues his high percentage from both the field and the free throw line. Missed them both. And K-State a chance to tie it up at two, coming back. They've got Norris out top. Henson inside to Charlie Bledsoe. Steve wanted the shot, couldn't get the ball, takes the shot, and he hit it. Steve Henson's on the board for K-State. Steve Henson sporting a shiner, a leftover of his fight he had with Ray Alford in Tuesday night's game in Manhattan. Got a little elbow to the eye, and he's looking like a boxer out there. Interesting, this exact same officials here tonight were at that ball game. Shot by Manning. The crew of Jim Bain, Rick Wilco, and Ed Hightower witnessed that Ray Alford-Steve Henson battle that turned into kind of a bench-clearing brawl. And they're here again tonight. K-State coming off a big win over Oklahoma State, 81-60. Of course, KU trying to rebound from the disaster in Ames, Iowa. You've got a turnover here, the first one on K-State. Bledsoe threw it to Coach Larry Brown. Jayhawks doing an eye what they failed to do up in Ames, really pick up the defensive intensity man-to-man -man all over the court. Cedric Hunter did a good job on Will Scott denying him the basketball here on the early going. No substitutions thus far. Same five out there for both squads. Manning working on Bledsoe. He's going to jump it under pressure. He drew the foul on Charles Bledsoe. Manning in his first two attempts from the free throw line missed both, and he pulled them both to the left. You know, it's very difficult to go to the free throw line early in the ball game. You're still very tense. You've got a lot of excitement in you, and I think that's what happened to Danny on his first attempt. Now let's see what happens here. 
As you saw the graphic earlier, he shoots 71% from the stripe. He's been there quite a bit, 155 times this season. Actually, this will be his 158th, his third trip tonight. Ron Meyer is set to check in for K-State, our first substitution. Charlie Bledsoe will go out. Charlie fouled out of this battle on February 4th. He's got the first foul. Maybe Lon Kruger wants to give him a little rest time, thinking about how important he will be later. This time, man, he gets them both. 6-2 Kansas. Full court pressure from KU. Turgeon on Will Scott. Now it's Pellick on Coleman. Steve Henson got there. He forces a shot. No good. Here comes Cedric. To Turgeon. Back to Cedric. And up with it. That's what Kansas wants exactly. They want that transition game blowing out of the defensive end with an advantage. A two on one or a three on two. And they're very, very effective with it. Anytime you come to Allen Fieldhouse, you want to try to take the crowd out of the ball game early. K-State has not done so. Richmond. Almost snuck it in. We've got a whistle. Against Danny Manning. No, it's not Manning. It's Pellick with his first. Pellick shoved off Ron Meyer. It was rather obvious. Here's another look at it underneath. Rich Richmond, a good effort even to get this shot up around the defense of Chris Piper. You can see the push off right as the ball came down. He was on, it was on Coleman rather than Meyer. So the first foul against KU. Ron Meyer out top. Went to high school in Hayesville, Kansas. Will Scott's first shot, no good. Turns in the rebound. Piper into Manning. Another transition basket. I think we'll probably see a timeout. K-State's got to hit one soon. They're down eight. Richmond forces it. Still didn't get it to sneak in. Meyer missed the tip. KU's running wild on him early. Henson goes down hard. Let's hope Steve is not hurt over there. Him and Manning a collision under the board. And Steve rolled into the crew of photographers over there. Let's take a look at it. We'll see. Ball go off Manning's foot. Kansas had it. Had a three on two on the break. They didn't quite handle it. Will Scott getting a hand on Cedric Hunter's pass to Manning. Look out, Steve. Danny Manning all over him. Henson, a tough kid, a freshman from McPherson. Played every single sport there is just about at that high school. And you got to give Manning credit. He tried to soften that blow to Steve Henson. In fact, he tried to catch Steve before he hit the ground. Meyer almost lost it. Norris Coleman is short with it. K-State coming out cold. Cedric Detergent back to Cedric. No. Tipped in by Mark Pellet. We're going to time out somewhere along here to settle things down. We've got a whistle. It's going to go against William Scott. K-State down 10 that quickly, 12-2. to We're going to have a TV timeout right here, I think. I'm sure that's what Lonnie was waiting on. He didn't want to use the timeout. He was waiting on the TV. We've got our first break. Kansas all over him early, 12-2. Fieldhouse here in Allen Fieldhouse. Not disappointed thus far. KU on a run. There's a KU break. They missed the shot off the break by Cedric Hunter, but Mark Pollock very alertly was in there on the rebound basket. Uh, KU is really working both hard, both boards very hard. They're, I mean, they're wanting to run. Uh, the thing you need very much to do when you come in here to play, you've got to take them out of the, take the crowd out of it. There's a Wildcats cold story. One for ten. The Jayhawks red hot. Five for six rebounds. KU leading at seven to three. You remember last time they met, K-State destroyed them on the offensive rebounds and still shot cold enough to lose the ball game. Larry Brown worried about the rebounding factor. Cedric to Piper inside, another hoop. There's a good backdoor play against Wildcat defensive pressure. 
And the ball goes out of bounds. K-State will hang on to it. Mitch Richmond, Charlie Bledsoe, and Norris Coleman have said publicly they feel like they can out-rebound KU. And they did just that in the first meeting, but it didn't work. Let's keep an eye on that factor tonight. The Wildcats need to be very patient on offense. Get the feel of the ball. Get the feel of the offensive end. Get a good shot. And get a basket. They need a basket desperately right now. Lynn Smith there with the ball, an important substitution. Ron Kruger getting a little speed in there to hope the defense the fast break a little bit better. Ron Meyer and Danny Manning pushing on each other. There's Richmond inside, and he didn't make the hoop, but he got fouled. They did the thing that they needed to do. They needed to be very patient, very deliberate, work the ball, make the Kansas defense work, and then they found Mitch Richmond right out of the basket. He drew the foul. Ron Meyer with a nice pass. Richmond wide open. Fellick comes over and hammers him with the body. Stop the shot from going in. Richmond will have two. Mark Pellick with two fouls. KU with two. Pellick also fouled out in the first meeting. Richmond to the line. He's got his first point. And K-State has finally gotten off of that two up there on the scoreboard. It's 14 to three. You know, Steve, when you come into Allen Fieldhouse, it's extremely important to get off on the right foot and to avoid that big rush that Kansas is going to put on you in the first four or five minutes. Richmond, Kansas both. So a good trip down this side for K-State. Still trailing by 10. Awfully early in the basketball game. Glad you could join us. Should be another Kansas beauty. State rivalry at its best. Inside the Manning. Norris Coleman's first foul. Keith Harris limps out of the ball game. Milton Newton back in. Harris been fighting that bum ankle. And again, he was listed as doubtful. He hurt that ankle two days after the first meeting between these two in practice. There's an air ball. Rebound, Norris Coleman. 13.52 to go, and KU jumped out on him. They've got the 16-4 to lead. A lot of that ankle problem with Harris caused by the quick turnaround, the game Tuesday, and now the game Thursday. Not much time to swell, get the swelling down between games. Another whistle against KU. It's going to work against Chris Piper. That's his second. Number four of the Hawks. Chris Piper covering Coleman has got, a, got his work cut out for him, and he paid the price with his second foul. Mark Dobbins tried the three-pointer. No, sir. Manning the board. KU wanting to run, as always. Newton inside the Piper. Back out to Milt. This is Cedric inside the line, and he hit the 18-footer. Four for Cedric Hunter. It's a 14-point Jayhawk lead. Trying to find Norris Coleman inside. The Wildcats. Another turnover. Cedric cut in front of Bledsoe. It's another break. Back to Cedric. Great transition play by the Jayhawks. Hunter and Pergen executed it beautifully. The two guys playing their last ball game at home really run the transition game well together. Another whistle. Norris Coleman drew the foul, and this one's going to go against Chris Piper. He's got three. The Wildcats, while down 16 points, have got to keep their poise and remember that they cannot catch up in a short period of time. They've got to just go out and grind it out, take their time on offense, work for good shots, be patient, and not let any give anything to KU on the defensive end. But it's, it's, gonna, it's a long process from here on because those 16 points are going to have to be made up over the period of time. Obviously, they got to shoot better. They're one for 11 in the early going. A couple of more substitutions. Richmond back in. Norris sits down. And William Scott's back out there. Inside the Mitch. Another whistle. This one against Keith Harris. Most of these fouls are coming from the pivot area where the KU kids are trying to cover either Coleman or Richmond in the pivot, and they're both difficult to cover in there because they're both strong. They both get position well. One more foul against the Hawks, and K-State will go into the bonus with 12 minutes, 12 and a half minutes left to go in the first half. That's the best news for the Wildcats. Now, by the same token, I mentioned that the KU fouls were coming in the pivot area, covering Mitchum and 
Mitch Richmond and Coleman. On that particular case, they caught Mitch Richmond pushing off in the pivot area. It's been physical thus far. Kevin Pritchard out there now for KU. Along with Milt Newton, Danny Manning, Cedric Cutter, and Keith Harris. Scott applying the full court pressure man to man on the freshman. Lynn Smith trying to keep up with Cedric Cutter. Bledsoe got there for the steal, but he's whistled for the foul, and that's number two on Charlie. Elbow on the back of Danny Manning, trying to get the pass inside from Hunter. As we'll see it come in, a bounce pass away from the defensive man, and he tried to reach around and committed the foul. Lon Kruger having some words with Jim Bain over there on the bench. It's a physical one thus far. A lot of fouls already. Eleven of them. We're not halfway through this first half. Jim Bain's an outstanding official, but you're not going to get very far with him by arguing. Turgeon been in the ball game the entire time. Bledsoe up awfully high and he's whistled for his second foul inside of 20 seconds. He's got three and Lon Kruger might have to sit him down. And he's going to as Ron Meyer gets up off the bench. He'll check right in. You see the pass, cross court pass against the zone creates so many things and Bledsoe just a second too late. Wanted the arm instead of the ball. That's what a Danny Manning will do to you. Charlie working a little bit too hard in there on Danny Manning, one of the better players, obviously, across our land. He goes to the line. He's two for four thus far from the strike. Get it, get it. Milt Newton there to cover the carom. Got position in on the pivot. They threw a little toss over the top pass for the, for the basket. Good execution. This has been a nightmare early for the white guys in purple. Richmond hits the bucket. He's got four, 22 to six. The Wildcats cleared aside then for Rich, Mitch Richmond. Turgeon running the show. Solid ovation for Mark and Cedric at the beginning of the game as the Allen Fieldhouse Loyal here said goodbye to them as they play their last ball game. Here's a foul against Danny Manning, and Danny was showing Jim Bain exactly what was going on in there. He was demonstrating a little subtle hold that he accused Ron Meyer of doing. Tell you what, after that last bucket Manning got, I knew Ron Meyer would get a chance to say something to an official that Manning was pushing off trying to get the ball. I don't know if he had the time to, to say anything to either of the officials, but they, they caught him that time. I think the bottom line of that loss is it was rather obvious that Manning was pushing off. Ron Meyer goes to the line, an honorable mention all academic basketball player just announced this week. 2.85 GPA in secondary education. Not bad. And his teammate Mark Dobbins was a first teamer with a 3.08 GPA in business. There you see his numbers as he makes them both. Our score, 22 to 8. K-State trying to struggle back into this thing early. Clive Dallas Fieldhouse, where a nice ovation just given to Jerry Seib, who is amongst the 15-8 here tonight. There you see Jerry, though, of course, the Wall Street Journal reporter just safely back home to the United States in the last week. Good to have him here for some good basketball. There's a rebounding down as Jack alluded to earlier. KU with a six rebound let edge and KU continuing to shoot well. Larry Brown was very concerned about the rebounding going into this game. Obviously they've talked about it and worked on it because they enjoy a good margin at this time. And the field goal percentage is just ridiculous thus far. KU 71%, K-State 17. Thus 22 to 8, KU running over him. Turgeon booted it off his knee and almost lost it. But Danny, got there in time. Danny Manning out, Mark Randall in. Three freshmen on the floor for the Jayhawks. Working the perimeter. Hey! 
Kevin Pritchard up in traffic. Turgeon gets the board. Or the pass out there, I meant to say. Missed the shot. And we've got another foul, a whistle. I believe it's against Mark Randall. Call could have gone against Randall or Milt Newton. I think it was Milt Newton up on somebody's back as he was trying to go to the board. It was an ill-advised position and an effort that he displayed. He got he away didn't with have it. good position. He got away with it because they called it on Randall. He called on Randall? Milt Newton always going for that jam on the rebound. He always wanted to jam one back through. Kevin Pritchard will sit down and Cedric's back out as Mitch Richmond goes to the line. Mitch with four. He, of course, averaging nearly 18. Been playing better the last few ball games. He had a slump where he couldn't do much. And he's three for three from the line tonight. In fact, in his last five games, over 18 points, five boards, 55% from the field. So things improving for Mitch Richmond. Got one of two. It's 22 to nine. Newton by himself in the corner. Wildcats in his own defense for the first time. Let's see if that does any better for him. Cedric Hunter looks at Manning. Now it goes to Danny. The steal by Ron Meyer to get there. Tried to save it and threw it awry, so KU will keep it. You know, his own defense could very well be very effective against the Jayhawks because their perimeter shooting is is somewhat suspect. Uh, Turgeon and Pritchard are pretty good shooters from the outside, but that's pretty well sums it up for their perimeter shooting. KU shooting 52% from the field as opposed to K-State's 47. K-State has had some mighty cold games this season. They've been rather inconsistent. They can sure light it up when they're on, though. We've got a discussion over the scorer's table. Wish we could shed some light as to exactly what's going on. I think it might have to do with resetting the 45 second clock, Ross. Uh, yeah, they had it at 45, now, they, now they've now got it at 30. Ed Hightower talking to Larry Brown. To let him know what they're going to do. There's not an option here for Larry Brown. He's just going to inform him on what he's going to do. Right. Larry Brown, of course, hasn't ever lost to K-State. Nine straight since he's been here over these Wildcats. There you get a good look at the officials tonight. Jim Bain, Rick Wolkow, and Ed Hightower from Decatur, Illinois, Boone, Iowa, and Alton, Illinois, respectively. Now we've got things straightened out. 20 seconds on the KU shot clock. Keith Harris has got it on the baseline. Nowhere to go. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Turgeon looking for help. Newton's going to have to get it off. Behind it goes, and K-State will get it. Kansas didn't look that comfortable on that possession. They were very hesitant. Uh, not near as confident as they were against the man defense. Mark Turgeon, in fact, took, turned down a shot, but he should have taken it. There seems to be a lull in the field house right now, too, so maybe if K-State can jump back in it, now's the time. As Richmond gets by and missed another easy one. Ron Meyer, some good work for the rebound. Again, the Wildcats cleared aside for Mitch Richmond to go one-on-one, -on -one, and he went down in there and didn't quite get the shot down, but it was a good play. Mitch had that trouble against KU last time. He got open in close and just couldn't seem to get it down that night. In fact, he only scored 11 against Kansas on Fed 4. Will Scott... Back to Henson to Richmond. Inside to Norris Coleman. He's been a stranger thus far. Gets his own board, goes back up with it, looking for the roll, doesn't get it. Turgeon will take the jumper. Coleman beat Harris to the ball, and Harris fouled him in frustration. Coleman's got to get in this ball game for the Wildcats to be successful. He's uh, had a little trouble getting the ball, then he missed a couple of shots that Nor Norris would normally hit. He's 0 for 3 thus far. He's only put up three shots and none counters. He'll go to the line to see if he can get his first point here tonight. Sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. 6'8", 210. 
course, his eligibility wouldn't suggest he's a sophomore. There's a shot from Norris. It's good. Almost 24 points per game for Norris. As you see, Sean Alvarado check into the game. Keith Harris will sit. Coach Brown been running Manning and Alvarado together quite a bit more lately. Sean getting nine minutes a game since the conference season has started. Norris made them both count. 22 to 11. Seven straight points for K-State. It was 22 to four and they're creeping back into it. And that's the way they're gonna have to operate offensively. Just be patient, take your time and you can get back in this before you realize it. Steve Henson and Will Scott doing a good job out top as you see the turnover. They stayed another chance to make it count. Looking for their ninth straight. This is Coleman. Alvarado over there to take him. And Norris got his first jumper. The zone defense is really creating problems for the Jayhawks. They're not comfortable. And they show it in their ball handling and their movement. And they've given life to K-State. They're clapping hands. They're jumping around on defense. They are back in it if they were ever out of it. 22 to 13 now. Inside to Alvarado with the left hand. I believe he's called for a travel there in case they will get the ball to turn over. Larry Brown, a couple of words for Big Sean. We're going to take a break. 22 to 13. That's nine straight points for K-State. They're getting back in it. Welcome back to Allen Fieldhouse, 7.52 to play in the first half of the second and final meeting in the regular season between K-State and KU. Everything has worked correctly for Lon Kruger, at least in the last five minutes of this game. Well, they're getting their feel of it now on the offensive end. They're playing with good deliberation and good patience. And obviously, you're going to shoot better when you're playing at your pace. On the defensive end, I think, is the key. They've got Kansas bothered problems right now. KU in four minutes, four minutes in the second without a field goal in this long stretch. Ron Meyer at the free throw line against Randall. Mitch Richmond's going to jump it, and he hit it. Three-pointer, and you can see the, the difference in the KU K-State kids right now. Uh, Confidence-wise, they're playing with a great deal more presence and a great deal more comfort. Richmond only two of seven from the field, but he made that one count. This is into the freshman Randall under the hoop, a good turn. So Mark Randall's now on the board, and KU finally scores one. It's been a four and a half minute drought, 24 to 16. Norris Coleman was there. I believe we got a ball game now, man. Coach, I think you nailed it right on the head. K State playing their kind of comfortable basketball now. They're into the game. Took them a while to get there. And Milton Newton walked with it. K-State a chance to get within four. The move to the zone for Lonnie Kruger really made the difference, really slowed down the the momentum that the Jayhawks had. This one's going to work against Kansas State. Mitch Richmond not happy about it. The foul against Steve Henson. That's his second. And here's a look at it. Another look at it. The left elbow of Steve Henson pushing off on Mark Turgeon as he made his move to the bucket. A good call. Six twenty-eight to go in the first half. Turgeon from three-point land. Too strong. Manning the board. Danny Manning in double figures with ten. Funny how good players are in the right position most of the time. Danny Manning was in the right position. Put that ball back in the basket. Coleman too strong. Here comes the Hawks. Randall almost lost it. Manny now topped. Shuffles it off to Cedric. Danny's open for the jumper. 
Good basketball by Hunter and Manning. Hunter penetrated through the defense. Flipped it back to Manning for the basket. Back to a 10-point lead. Norris Coleman's got that look in his eye. He came to play tonight. Here's a try at it. Too strong. He wants the ball. Nice save from Dobbins, but Randall was there. Bill Newton's going to try it. He's too strong. Block from Coleman. Mark Randall, a couple of head fakes, and Norris didn't go for it. KU's got plenty of time. 35 on the shot clock as they regroup. We got a whistle before the shot. I believe it's Newton into Ron Meyer. Milton Newton penetrating, trying to draw the defense on himself, then flipped the ball off, but he continued on and charged Ron Meyer. Good defensive play by Ron. Ron Syme coming there in established position. Like Coach said, Newton got up off the ground and really had no place to come down. Committed the foul, and Ron Meyer will come down to this end and shoot the free throw. Number one on Mill tonight, sophomore from Washington, D.C., and Ron Meyer shooting 63% from the line, 80% in conference play. Two for two tonight, looking for his third point. And a chance to bite into that 10-point KU lead. Kansas is a very explosive team when you allow them to run. If you, if you take away the transition, then they're really an average basketball team. And I don't mean that disparagingly, but when you let them run, they're a great basketball team. Ironically, it was Iowa State that ran KU to death on Tuesday night playing KU's kind of basketball, and the Hawks just never showed up to play defense in that one. But apparently they've rebounded quite well back in front of the home crowd. You see Lance Simmons there. He checks in. It's his first duty tonight. Sophomore from St. Louis. Since Norris has been back, he's lost most of his play in time, but still a very important part of this Wildcat team. Wildcats go back to the man defense. A little change of pace. Give KU, KU something else to look at. Oh, what a great one. What a great basket by Danny Manning. Jeff Gelder into the ball game. The assist to Danny. Look at Kevin Pritchard working at this end. DeMarc Pellick. No, no, it's called off. Steve Henson the foul before Cedric Hunter got rid of the basketball. That might have been a very opportunistic foul on Steve Henson's part because it was to a wide open man under the basket. Great pass by Hunter. Great vision to Mark Randall. No, it was Mark Pellick. But Steve Henson fouled Hunter in the meantime. And Steve Henson leaves the ball game with three fouls. So Bledsoe and Henson both with three for K-State. We got a lot of people in foul trouble, Steve. Awfully early. Piper's got three on the other side. Harrison Pellick with two. I think that's a big foul on the Wildcats. Takes Steve Henson out of the ball game. He's really been running the floor well, directing the defense especially. Cedric Hunter with his seventh point. The Wildcats had cut this lead to six. Now it's back up to 11 with a chance to go to 12. Coach Larry Brown and Mark Freidinger doing some synchronized coaching over there. Did you catch that? Cedric misses the second one. The rebound, though. Danny Manning on another great play. How many times do we say that Danny Manning makes great plays? He's got 16 with 4.16 to go in the first half. Wow. Lynn Smith inside to Coleman. He missed an easy one. Richmond. And he gets it. Richmond with 10. Great defensive, great offensive rather position there for Mitch Richmond. And a good power move to take it back up and in. 33-22. Cedric the jumper. Coleman out rebounds Geldner. They stayed in transition. This is Dobbins. Norris Coleman challenges him. Let's see what the call is. It's against Norris. Jeff Gilder had the position. So join 
Norris Coleman's name to the list of those in a little bit of foul trouble. He's got a couple. Norris got up in the air where he had no control over his body and Gilner had position. Norris came down into him for a charging foul. Gilner was set up right in the middle of the lane. He saw that move coming because Norris made his move just beyond the free throw line and, and that really gave him time to get set up and accept the charge. Back to the last time KU was at the free throw line. Hunter on his second free throw missed and Manning got the re missed rebound and put it back in. That's something that coaches really, really hate to see happen because it's something that shouldn't happen. If you block out properly, you can't. the offensive people won't get in there. Jeff Gellner misses the free throw. Okay, you having some difficulties at the free throw line. That was only the 16th try of the year for Jeff. This is Richmond, another whistle. This one's against Jeff Gellner. Reaching around again on the pass inside. Down to Richmond. Gellner's an interesting story, as we've been telling you in all of our broadcasts. He didn't play much at all, as you see the replay. Jeff in there working against Mitch. Whistled for the foul. He's averaging 10 minutes a game since the conference play began, and Larry Brown's falling in love with him. Well, he's done a very good job for a freshman. He's played mature beyond his years. Richmond the miss. 3.20 to go in the first half. Try to find Manning. No call. Cedric's got the ball out top. <laughs> Gellner in the corner. Back to Cedric. Pellick was open. Didn't see him. Now they go to Mark. And he's going to jump it. And he hit it. Six for Mark Pellick. Inside of three minutes, Coleman against Manning. Smith wide open. Richmond turns around and hits it. That ball went into Norris Coleman, and he really drew a crowd. He couldn't even turn and face the basket. There were so many people around him. All of a sudden, Mitch Richmond is warming up. He's four of nine from the field now, and he's got 12 points here in the first half. Two and a half to play. An 11-point Hawk lead. Inside to Manning, Meyer there to break it up. Lynn Smith, Pritchard back. The jumper from Lynn Smith almost crawled in. We got a whistle against Mark Pellett. And guess what? That's three on him. Interesting to point out that KU has played fast, good shooting type of basketball here early, but why all the fouls? They've made, really made some poor decisions, individual decisions, with their fouls. They, half of those fouls could have been avoided. Maybe it's excitement. Obviously, that's the reason. But uh, usually in this type of a game where there is so much excitement, a lot of fouls are made because kids don't exercise very good judgment. Mark Dobbins no good. As Norris Coleman fell down, Manny was open for the rebound. Cedric putting on a little bit of a show there. Richard to Cedric Hunter. This is Geldner. Randall trapped on the baseline. Manning the pass back to Randall. Meyer blocked it out of there, but Mark got the board. It was a good defensive play to Ron Meyer, but Randall very alertly was ready for it and went back up for the basket. The lead is 13. Way over there to Mark Dobbins. Lynn Smith getting a lot of playing time at point guard with Henson in foul trouble. And here's a foul against Mark Randall. That's his second. Tell you what, Mark Randall led with his right hand on that play and tapped the ball. If he'd gone with his left hand, he wouldn't have had his body. He would have come up with the steal. Let's take another look at it. Let's look at it. He leads with the right and gets the body. He may not have got to it with his left, but he would have avoided the foul. Lead with the right, that's pretty much what Henson did against Ray Alford Tuesday night, isn't it? <laughs> this is the Wichita product at the line, and he missed another one. Actually, his first miss, he's four or five from the strike, and KU will bring it back down with a minute 23 to play in the first half. Randall turns around, he's short. Meyer big for the rebound. See what K-State can do, they're down 13. 
Good pass to Norris Coleman. Coleman hits it. You gotta find it. Kansas offense, interesting. The guys that are supposed to be shooting the ball are not shooting it. And those that you don't expect to are the ones that are putting it up. And it's a little bit surprising. Pritchard, that's his first shot. That's an air ball. Maybe I can see why. Here comes K-State. Lynn Smith. He's going to get it. Lynn Smith is on the board. K-State only down nine with 41 seconds to play here in the first half. Only two or three seconds between the game clock and the shot clock, so we'll probably see a one-shot situation. They're going to hold it for one shot. Larry calls, Coach Brown, that is, calls Jeff Geldner out. They will sit back with it. Pritchard's got it now. You see the clock. I'll say this. Those both teams are tired at this point. There have been a lot of running up down this floor. You can look at it, you can tell by their face that they're tired. You can also tell by the fact they've been going up to the free throw line and both teams have been missing. Eight seconds on the game clock, four on the shot clock. Geldner from 19-9. And K-State got it within nine and it's 12 thanks to the three-point shot by the freshman Jeff Gelder. And as Coach said, somebody you wouldn't expect to put it up. He not only put it up, he buried it. We're at the half, Kansas, on a 40 to 28. We'll be back with our halftime festivities after a break. KU jumped out to an 18-point lead. And they've, the Cats have fought him back to a 12-point deficit. And Coach Hartman, the change in defense for the Cats may have been the reason why. Well, it was very significant, uh, Steve. As I mentioned earlier, when you come into this building, the one thing that you want to happen is you want to get off to a good start and you want to avoid the KU crowd from getting into the game. Uh, as it happened, the crowd got into the game from the outset. KU got in many good transitions. That was a very big factor in the first half. I thought the Wildcats change of defense was also very significant and allowed them to get back in. They're back in this ball game, even though they're down 12. Lon Kruger in there telling them how to get back into it more, and Larry Brown also giving his halftime speech. As for us, we will be back. Ross Dahl will have a couple of special guests at halftime, so stay with us. <laughs> the court, the fans of KU Jayhawks, a chance to vote on the Kansas Dream Team, the five best in KU history, and those five were honored just moments ago. They are, you see them, Will Chamberlain. Clyde Lavellia, JoJo White, Darnell Valentine, and Danny Manning. Of course, JoJo White was able to make it tonight as Danny Manning in the locker room and Clyde Lavellia here. Cumulus Clyde, they call him, the Kansas Dream Team. And boy, they sure got some plenty of ovation from the KU fans here in Allen Fieldhouse. Right now, let's go to Ross Dalton. He's got a couple of special guests over in the corner of the court. Ross? Thank you very much, Steve. It's kind of a dad's night theme here. We've got a little bit of an interesting story. We've got Bob Turgeon, father of Mark, who's seeing his son play his last home game. And we've got Mike Henson, the father of Steve Henson, who's seeing just his second KUK State game with the son playing in. We'll start with Bob. Of course, I think Mark has lived a dream the last four years, and you've been lucky enough to, to live along with him. And you've got to have some bittersweet feelings tonight. Yeah, there's been an awful lot of highs, Ross. It's been great. He's just done fantastic, better than I even thought he could do. The famous story about Mark, the, the talk with Larry Brown, the bold prediction that he was as good as any point guard KU had. When you heard that story and you, you talked to Mark when that was all going on, did you believe he could come in and contribute like he's done here for KU? Yeah, I really did. He's ha always had a lot of confidence. He works hard. He just had small on the size, but he makes up for the big heart. What's it been like for you? I know you've traveled all over the country and over to Hawaii to see KU play. Uh, what do you get out of the, the daily ritual? Well, I'm a frustrated college player myself, so I've got to relive my college days with him. It's been just fantastic. What do you go for now? And, and maybe give us a little bit of a clue of what's in store for Mark maybe next year. Well, we're hoping he's going to be a graduate assistant for Larry, and if that works out, the NCAA's cut that back a little bit, so we're not sure just what's going to happen, but he wants to coach here. All right. Good luck to you, and I know you've enjoyed all the KU games. Now we'll move over to a guy who's coached a ton of games. He coached his son, Mike Henson. What's it like for you to see your play, uh, your son down on the court? Well, it's a lot more fun to watch him play when you're just spectating than when you're coaching him. There's a little less pressure on both of us, I think. What do you, you find yourself telling him in your mind, do this, do this, 
Well, the two things I tell him most is quit fouling him and shoot the ball. If we can do that, I think he'd be a little better off. Your reactions when Steve decided to come to K-State, he was the biggest in-state recruit that Lonnie Kruger got. Uh, what was your reaction as a, as a coach for him going there? Well, I was really thrilled. I always want to see the best kids in Kansas go to Kansas schools, and we were very happy that he went, plus the fact that it's close to home. We get a chance to see him play. We think it's great for the state of Kansas. KU had three or four Kansas kids out here starting. K-State had one. I like to see Kansas basketball players play in the state if they can. With your busy schedule coaching basketball, how often do you get a chance to come up and see him play? Well, I've had a chance to see most of the home games. We have some Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday games that we won't get to watch. I'd like to see the Big 8 make sure that they don't play on those games, but uh, I've had a chance to see him play quite a bit. All right, thank you very much, Mike Kinson and Bob Turgeon, two fathers. One seeing his last home game for his son, and the other one seeing the first of many, many to come. Let's go back to you, Steve. Okay, Ross, very good. Interesting, Mike Kenson played some Kansas basketball and track himself at Bethany High School. Nice interview with both Mr. Turgeon and Mr. Henson. Our halftime score, 40 to 28. We'll take a break and come back and look at the statistics and begin that second half. 40 to 28, our halftime score. We're only a minute away from getting the second half going as the K-State Cats are trying to fight themselves back into this thing. They trail by 12, and we can have a chance now to take a look at the first half statistics and see where the strengths and weaknesses are. And the first thing, Jack, is is the shooting. Well, it's very difficult to be effective and win shooting 33%. I think the Wildcats have done considerably better than 33% after the first six or eight minutes of the first half. Kansas started extremely well, hitting, hitting a very high percentage from the opening tip. They cooled off a little bit. The surprising thing is he used 38% from the free throw line. That is very surprising. Kansas State shooting a respectable 69%. Three-point field goals, not that much of a factor. Uh, they both hit one. Rebounds, KU 24 to 16. That is significant. That's something that Larry Brown was concerned about coming into the ball game. Kansas State had out-rebounded the Jayhawks in Manhattan considerably. But Kansas is doing an excellent job tonight. Turnovers are six and seven. That's about even. Second chances. Look at this. KU has scored 12 points off offensive rebounds or second chance opportunities. The Wildcats, too. There's a big difference there. Okay, let's take a look at the leading scorers in the first half of basketball. Danny Manning leading for the KU Jayhawks with 16 points. Cedric Hunter's got seven. Mark Pellick with three field goals. He's got six for the KU Jayhawks. And filling it out, Mark Randall. There you see the two leaders on each side. Richmond 12, Coleman 8. Randall's got four. Geldner hit the three-pointer just going into the break. And for K-State, Ron Meyer with four. Beside the two you see there, Steve Henson with a couple and Lynn Smith with a couple. All that adds up to a 12-point, 40-28 to 28 lead for KU. And these numbers are always interesting to look at. KU went ahead at the break, 15-1. and one. So it would seem insurmountable but we know as basketball goes that's never the case well especially this year with a three-point shot and kansas state has a, a lot of good three-point shooters we're set to go for the second half of basketball ku's enjoyed the lead the entire way in the first half they just really jumped on them early outran them out reboarded them danny manning and ed hightower doing some construction work on an electrical plate over there between the J and the A at the half court mark in the top part of your screen, left hand side. Can't get the plate down. Thought it was interesting, Ross, after your interview with Mr. Turgeon and Mr. Henson, you saw Steve and Mark in the center of the court shaking hands and wishing each other good luck. Interesting story. A senior about to leave and a freshman just getting going. They're going to go back to huddles here to figure out what the problem is on the court. One other note on those two. When we got done with the interview, Bob came over and shook Mike's hand and said, enjoy it because it goes off the fast. Jack, while we're on that subject of Mark Turgeon and Cedric Hunter leaving tonight, I know for coaches it's a tough, tough thing to lose a player after coaching him for four years. Well, it's a very emotional experience, uh, Steve. You know, those, you're with those kids for four years. You go, You have a lot of experiences together that are, that are significant. They're very emotional. And at the end of those four years, I'm telling you, it, it's it's quite a quite a thing to think about that you're not going to have a, a relationship on a day-to-day -day basis that you've had for the last four years, and you really hate to see it go. You get very attached to it. 16 years at K-State. I'm going to put you on the spot here. 
a lot of your ex-players are probably out there, but tell us who your favorite was. Who'd you get along with the best? Is there one? No, Steve, I would never, ever get into that. Uh, in many ways, they're all favorites because even though some do a better job or more productive job on the floor and playing, but they all contribute in their different ways. They're all, you get very close to all of them. And we have a lot of great kids, and I wouldn't even begin to name one. Special hand for Mark Freidinger there. He did the repair work on, on the half court stripe, and a few people in the first few rows gave him a standing ovation for it. Now we're set to go, the second half of basketball. I'm sure Mark Turgeon will be kind of a favorite of Larry Brown's. The Turgeon story here the past four years at KU. Here we go. Down 12, K-State with the basketball. Inside to Coleman. He's hungry for the hoop, and he hits it. He comes out with a quick two, and the lead's 10. That fast. Any effect, Coach, in that kind of false start we had to open the second half? you think either team, either coach, uh, concerned about having to wait like that? Not really. Not really. It Bledsoe got a hand on it. He wasn't sure if he wanted to try to grab it down or let it go, and he was kind of halfway between the two and nicked it out of bounds. KU's if, ball. If that delay had been a significant amount of time, then possibly they would have been concerned about it, but no longer than it was. Chris Piper back out there for KU to start the half with three fouls, as is Mark Pellick. Kansas State's in the zone, and I really think this is the best defense against Kansas. Turgeon will jump it. Looked good from here, and it was. Turgeon with a bucket in each half. Henson blows by him, getting it down the other side. Will Scott has not been a factor, and he followed the block with his first two of the ball game. Kind of an unusual play. He went up to shoot, it was blocked, and then it fell to the floor, and nobody went after it for a second. You Cat fans are wondering where has Will Scott gone? His last three games, he's only scored 17. Pellick to try. Manning the board. Manny Manning once again is in the right place. The Cats really need to get Will Scott involved. In fact, that was only his second shot, so he's just not seeing the ball, and a little bit has that to do with the defense of Cedric Hunter, and now Mark Turgeon, who's on him. Coleman against Pellick. He couldn't get it off the glass. Manning's going to run the break. Turgeon tried to go back to him and does. Oh, good basketball from Danny Manning. Uh, straight basketball handling by Turgeon and, and Manning. Will Scott has come out firing. Missed that one. Another break. Manning. Boy, when they're running, they're impressive. And they're effective. 48 to 32. The first couple of minutes have first, been like the first few minutes of the first half for K-State. The first few minutes of the second half are a very important period during the ball game, and I know both coaches wanted to get off on the right foot in this second half. Will Scott's wide open, and he hit it. Will Scott has put up three quick shots here in the second half, so obviously Coach Kruger said, hey, Will, shoot it. There's no question about it, Lonnie visited with him at halftime and said, you've got to get in the game and you've got to help us because he's out looking for his shot now. 14-point lead. KU looking to tie the Big A record. 48 straight on their home court. Here's a turnover. Richmond goes to the middle. He finds a Norris Coleman all by himself. Norris with 12. K-State a nice little four-point run. Henson out on Hunter. Tried to get it to Manning. Henson over there. And it's going to be K-State ball. And Danny Manning throwing the ball down on the court. Boy, that Henson's a tough ball player, isn't he? Never afraid to go into a fight or go into a physical situation. Well, he's not afraid to get on the floor after the ball. What's this effort here? Oh, yeah. Steve Henson. He gets the turnover for K-State. He'll give up his body when he has to. They can cut it back to 10. Richmond calling for the ball against Manning. Will Scott wants it. He walked with it. A little tentative. 
A little undecided whether he wanted to take the jumper or try to take it closer with the dribble, and he got caught in between and took steps. So Coach Kruger right up off the bench encouraging him, saying that's the kind of taking the ball to the hoop he wanted out of him here in the second half. And Larry Brown puts Jeff Gildner in and takes Pelic out. He wants more speed out there. He sees what Coach Kruger wants to get done. Approaching the 16-minute mark of the ball game, the 12-point Hawk lead. Richmond working on Piper inside to Danny Manning. 24 for Danny. Great pass by Chris Piper, who threw that ball through a lot of Wildcats to get it to Manning under the basket. Coleman, Manning to check him. Will Scott by Cedric Hunter. Short with it. Piper and Richmond fighting for it. And Will Scott called for the foul as he went in there to fight with him. And he's not happy with it. That's his second. Well, Will Scott definitely in the ball game. He's he's getting involved, even though that was a little bit over involved as he made the foul. I tell you, a very significant thing is substitution in a ball game like this, because those kids are running up down his floor, and, and it's a very physical game. That's the first foul of the second half. It's 50 to 36, 15:49 to go. A long way home. The story for the KU Jayhawks when they beat their opponent on the board, 16 and two, three and five win behind. And one of those three was a win February 4th in Manhattan. There you see the rebound story, 30 to 17, K-State beat them to 30 offensive boards in the first matchup. So KU has remedied that problem. There you see another goodbye to Mark Turgeon and Cedric Hunter. They've been a couple of good ones here at KU. Cedric Hunter, many feel, particularly in this building, one of the best point guards in the country, although he hasn't gotten some of the acclaim of some of the others. Cedric Hunter's going to take the jump of Will Scott there for the block. Interesting matchup. As Kansas State was switching on defense, Richmond wound up on Cedric Hunter. Let's see if, I think the Wildcats will zone this baseline out of bounds play. Yeah, two on two zone. Turgeon calling for Cedric to take over the point guard duties. Nice low angle camera there to see the action on the court. Cedric's going to jump it again. And he got it. Cedric Hunter's first two of the half. He's got nine. Of all the games that we've done this year for the KU Hawks, I haven't seen Cedric and Mark Turgeon out there together this much. Turgeon to steal. Trying to go out with a bang. 54 to 36. That equals their biggest lead tonight. Inside to Coleman. Richmond there to follow. His first bucket of the second half. He's got 14. A lot of contact down in that low pivot area. Coleman's getting bumped considerably down in there, but there's such a crowd, I doubt if the officials can determine who's making the contact. Pressure from K-State. Lose Turgeon open, he finds Piper. Wildcats were trapping, and they had to leave a man open to get a trap on, and they got burned doing it. I think three guys went to the trap. Normally two go, I think three went, including Scott, who went over, and that left the open. Piper on Richmond with the three fouls. Inside to Coleman. Too hard off the glass. Manning the board. It's Turgeon against Henson. Blocked by Henson. Turgeon goes down hard and Steve Stahl for the foul. That's the fourth on the freshman Henson. I'll tell you what, Steve Henson, a high school state high jumping champ. Watch him get up off the floor. Turgeon shoots it early. But Henson way, way up there. But Turgeon will get the two free throws. Another look at it. You know, really, the, the contact was made after the ball had left Turgeon's hand. It, it'll be interesting to see if they give him two shots. Because he was, he was not shooting. He had already shot the ball when the foul was made. So Lon Kruger forced to make a substitution. Henson goes down with four fouls. Lynn Smith comes in. Charles Bledsoe back in. Will Scott joins Henson on the bench. 
I think there's a big weight on Lynn Smith's shoulders right now. He needs to play tough, aggressive defense like Henson has been doing. Turgeon hits the first. He's got seven tonight. A 20-point KU lead. That is a bunch. Looking for Coleman. A turnover. Randall there. They stay the pressure. the record this season. Their last three ball games are on the road beginning this weekend in New York to face St. John. So the very first home ball game next season if the Hawks can win tonight will break the longest home Big 8 winning streak in the history of the conference. Of course they got about two more seasons or three more seasons or a bunch more seasons to catch Kentucky's all-time record on a home court. Up there in the low 100s, 123, I believe. There's a lot of time left in this ball game, Steve. Even though it, 20 points is, is a great amount to have to make up in 13 minutes, but it can be done. And I think that the Wildcats are going to settle down and get back in this ball game. What is the first thing they need to do to do such a thing? At least it's, to, it's, to, it's to be reminded that they, that they can't make up the 20 points in a short period of time. It's going to take some time. Cedric Hunter went up for the jumper. Let's see who the foul is on. Lynn Smith. That's exactly right, number one on Lynn. And the third on K-State this half. But the, the, they, they can't overplay on defense. They, they can't rush things on the offensive end. They've got to take their time and, and, and be accurate from the field and accurate from the free throw line. Cedric Hunter to the line. You see his numbers tonight. He sure can hand out the assist. He's got five already tonight. Third in the Big Eight behind Hornacek and Carr in the history of it. 634 of them now. I'm sorry, not... Yeah, that's right, 634. Sounded like too many there for a minute. <laughs> Norris Coleman way outside. Trying to get it into Richmond. Keith Harris working on Richmond low. They're not even covering Lynn Smith out on the floor. They know that he doesn't want to shoot the ball out there. That allows Hunter to drop back in. Look at Hunter drop back inside. Almost got a hand on that ball. Look at him go to the offensive board. Let's see which way it's going. It's a whistle. It's going to go against KU. They called one foul. They could probably have called six down in there on that possession. Keith Harris gets the push foul. And he's got three. That's the first on the Hawks in the second half. Richmond really trying to beat his defender there. Working hard under the basket. Harris to check him. Lynn Smith will drive. Look at this play. Manning up there. Right, a great effort by Lynn Smith. Manny came close to knocking that one in the cylinder. Randall to the middle to Danny Manny. The big guy sliding through a pretty small opening there for an easy two. That was great ball handling too. They passed that ball in a crowd extremely well. Coleman says why not? Off the heel of the rim. Cedric to Pritchard. He's got Manny following. He takes it himself. Things have gotten ugly for K-State.
around the second half and get control, the opposite has happened. KU has outscored them 24 to 10 since the beginning of the second half, and this thing has turned into what you might call a rout with 11.44 to go at the huge Kansas lead. Well, Kansas has just done an exceptional job of getting the ball out of the defensive end, get it into transition, and go down and handle the ball well on the break. It's not so, so much that the Kansas State kids are not doing some things right, it's just that Kansas State or KU is just doing everything perfect. Jack, how much of this do you think has to do with the embarrassment the Hawks suffered in Oh, eight? I don't think there's any question of what that was a big motivation influence on their play, there's no question. And the home crowd. They're really playing well on the defensive end. Ron Meyer, a jumper. Randall right the board. And they have just dominated the board play. No question about that. They've done it all tonight. Lynn Smith called for the foul. His second. KU shooting a pretty solid 61% from the field. Interesting. They are tied for ninth in the nation in field goal percentage. 52%. A lot of that's got to do with Danny Manning, who lately has just been on a tear, shooting over 70%. And Danny will take it out for KU, for Cedric. Interesting to see what K-State can muster here in the final 11 minutes of play. The turnaround, too long. Lynn Smith, the little guy with the rebound. Stole away from Keith Harris, got it. Missed the layup. Dobbins the board. Harris is laughing at himself. Dobbins from three. Short. No, he made it. Uh, Mark, Dobbins is, Mark Dobbins is a very good shooter when he takes his time, gets squared up, gets in rhythm. Threw a missile up there. Thought it would catch the front of the rim, but down she went. Three-pointers will help considerably for K-State. Piper the turnaround. Look at Manning beat him on the board. How many times have we mentioned the fact that Danny Manning was in the right place for offensive rebounds? It's just a sense and a feel that he has. That time Manning called for the foul on Richmond. He was in the right place, but didn't execute. He was in the right place. Initiated a little contact, enough to make the foul. Here's another look at it, pass inside to Richmond. Richmond into him and drawing the foul. Coach's KU team, everybody said, is so much different here on their home floor. How much is that is the crowd? How much of it is just team chemistry or is it all just confidence? Well, we all know that the home court is a big advantage and a big factor in basketball, more so than any other sport. I think it's just the comfortable confines of your home floor. And, uh, and uh, the crowd, of course, is a factor. But I think it's just you're more comfortable at home. It's just like a golfer who gets comfortable on his home golf course. You just like to play there as Richmond hit the free throw. He's got 15. Danny Manning left the ball game with 28. You were speaking of golf. The last time Jack Hartman left this arena, he had golf clubs in his hand. I wanted to ask you about that, Coach. Did they get you the right set? Did you, have you ever used them? Did you like them? Oh, yes. I liked them very much. And I will always be grateful for that gesture that the KU people did, especially Larry Brown. Well, I'm a golfer myself, and I know how important the right set of clubs are. I just They should have checked with you, right? Well, they called my <laughs> pro and, and got the right club. Richmond missed it. Turns in the rebound. KU kind of cruising with 10 minutes to play. They're up by 24. A lot of physical activity inside. Hunter to Piper. Back to Hunter. Finally a whistle. Boy, something had to break on that possession. There was some pushing and shoving going on <laughs> in both directions. Well, and eventually they're going to have to call something or somebody was going to... Really, really, it can, it can really happen that so many times there's so much contact that the official is not real sure which contact to call and by that time it just goes on to another area and he, and he can't ever quite catch up to it. And that was the case there, Ross. There was six or seven fouls committed and only one call. Maybe a 25-point lead. The officials are falling asleep a little bit. Well, I'll tell you what, the intensity with which the KU kids are playing on the boards is impressive. Randall got one of two. 67-42. Richmond wants to turn on Piper. 
Let's see if the foul goes against Piper. It does, but back in Plasky will go. And Chris Piper's got four fouls. Mitch Richmond is that kind of ball player. He gets the ball, goes at somebody, and well, always looking for the foul when he's putting it up. Mitch is a big kid with a strong, wide body, and, and it's hard to get around him. And he's very powerful and strong. He handles the ball in the crowd well, and he can get off a shot where a lot of people can't. A little bit of Derek Chivas there from Mitch Richmond. Made a fake, got his defender in a bad position, and went hard to him and drew the foul. Jeff Breyer does that pretty well also. Richmond, Kansas, a three-point play. The junior from Boyd Anderson High School in Fort Lauderdale with 18. The lead is 22 for the Hawks. Larry Brown, oh, here's a steal from Lynn Smith. He's got to beat Cedric Hunter. He goes after him with the body, and he draws the foul. You saw Lynn Smith there. Once he got in the air, turn his back towards Cedric Hunter hoping he could draw the foul with his back and then still have the ability to flip up the shot. Put his body, here's Lynn on a very good steal. He takes it to the basket. Now watch him put his body between Hunter and the ball. Try to spin it in reverse. He gave himself a chance to make it. It was a very good play by Lynn. Kansas State, I think, would much prefer to play a zone at this point, but at this stage of the game and behind as much as they are, they've got to play an aggressive man to try to create some turnovers and some steals. Lynn Smith, the senior, playing his last KUK State rivalry game unless they meet again in the Big A tournament. He's a great young man, too, Lynn Smith. Fine young person. Overton High School in Memphis, Tennessee, where Lynn's from, came from Connors State Community College in Oklahoma. And we're going to take a break, 67 to 47. K-State has cut a 26-point lead back down to 20. Nine minutes and 18 seconds to play, and that's exactly what Coach Lon Kruger just told his guys. Yelling some orders at Norris Coleman, Mitch Richmond, and Will Scott, the three big guns for K-State. 20 points down. Sure, they've got the time. They can get back in this thing. Tell you what Lonnie was telling him. He was telling him, regardless of what the score is, you fight every chance you get on both ends of the basket, play as hard as you can, and finish this thing with with a lot of dignity and effort. Jeff Gilder by himself, Henson back in the ball game. He's got four fouls, only two points. The trap on the baseline, leaves Manning open. The man just does not miss, that's 30 for Danny Manning. Kansas has done an excellent job when Kansas State traps them, they keep moving the ball and find the open man. Danny Manning, 14 of 17 tonight. Lynn Smith got a hand on it. Manning saved it. Purge in the block from Dobbins. Pretty good little bit of basketball there. Great play by Danny Manning on that tap over to Turgeon. Turgeon didn't quite control it. Richmond just inside the three-point line. Pellet the rebound. That is incredible that Danny Manning can shoot 14 of 17. Seems to do it every game. 12 boards to go along with that. And he's every place he's supposed to be even though he's not shooting. Cedric Hunter over the head. Pellick the miss. Coleman the rebound. Liz Smith's got a three-on-one if he hurries. Danny there to break it up. Danny Manning tonight into double figures. The 25th time in the last 27 KU games. He's third in the nation in field goal percentage, going after Greg Dryling's KU record, set last year of 61%. And tonight, he became third in the all-time KU uh, list, passing Dave Rovish. He needed 21 to do it. He's got 30. Richmond calls for the foul. He's got just two. You know, Danny Manning would be a great, great basketball player for the University of Kansas if he never scored a point. All the other things he does over and above scoring points is just very, very impressive. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Larry Bird, I read somewhere, they asked him who his favorite college player is in the nation, and his response was Danny Manning. I think there's a lot of similarities between those two. Oh, do it all type players, complete players. 13 for Coleman. 
Richmond the rebound, fading away, he hit it. He's got 20, and it's 69 to 50, a 19-point KU lead. Inside of eight minutes now. An item for K-State, three of their starters, Bledsoe, Hinton, and Scott, have combined for six points. Bledsoe has not scored, was taken out of the game early with those three quick fouls. Mark Nelson out there for K-State. First time we've seen him tonight. He's from Pittsburgh, Kansas, junior from Independence Juco. Geldner working against Henson, blocked by Coleman, Dobbins the save. K-State a chance to cut it to 17. Mitch Richmond tried to three-point it, purging up for the board. Behind the back, Cedric couldn't hang on to it. Turgeon has five rebounds on the game. Kevin Pritchard's going to check in. Larry Brown not happy with Jeff Gellner's play. He pulls him out. Amazing. A freshman kid getting yelled at by the likes of Larry Brown. There's got to be an intimidation factor there, like it was for you, Coach. All those years you hear about Jack Hartman, here you are, freshman, getting yelled at by the guy. That's part of coaching. It really is. It's an experience that youngsters have to go through. KU's going to slow it down a tad. 6.35 to go. Holding that 19-point lead. Kansas was getting a little bit loose on the offensive end. Larry wants them to get back into their pattern. 15 seconds on the shot clock. We've got a foul away from the ball. Norris Coleman on Danny Manning. That's number three on Norris. You might have heard the fans behind us yelling at the official about the contact between Norris and Danny Manning. They were happy when the foul was called. I think some fans actually called that foul, Ross. I, I didn't hear a thing. What are you guys talking about? i got to put my headsets <laughs> back on. They're on the court. <laughs> they were helping the uh, officials point to Coleman's contact underneath. So a new 45 seconds for KU. One more foul against K-State. They'll go to the bonus. Ron Kruger about to make some substitutions. He's got Lynn Smith and Lance Simmons over there dying to get in. The Wildcats came out of the baseline out of bounds in his own defense. Then they changed to a man in, during play. Cedric Hunter pointing to Mr. Hightower, telling him Dobbins is slapping at him. The miss from KU. Danny Manning, he's there again. We're going to fight for it. Dobbins against Manning. Dobbins called for the foul, but once again, Coach, Danny, where he should be to get the basketball. He's just a great player. He works so very hard, whether he's involved in the play or not. He works very hard for his teammates. He's almost unselfish to a fault. Here's a replay. Mark Pellick forcing the turnover. Coleman couldn't find the handle. And it's Dobbins and Manning. They get tied up as Manning goes right up. Danny only two of five from the line. This is his first try in the second half. Missed another one. So he does have a fault. We might have found a weakness. <laughs> he hasn't hit the free ones. Thirty points ain't bad. Lynn Smith and Mark Nelson will bring it down for K-State at 70-50. Smith will challenge him inside to Coleman. That'll go. Great, Great pass by Lynn Smith. Great dump off pass. Norris Coleman with 15. It's about eight points short of his average. 5-18 to go. Manning under the hoop was pretty but didn't count for anything here comes KSU Nelson threw it away uh -oh. you can't give Lynn Smith much of a chance to stop Danny Manning Norris Coleman answers the other side Scoring back and forth basketball going on out there right now. You may see Manning get taken out for the next dead ball. He's really 
really winded about three or four times quick up and down the court. Got a whistle here. Mark Nelson called for the foul as he tried to move toward the hoop. Mark Nelson from a basketball family, as is that guy, Scooter Berry, the son of Rick Berry. Mark Nelson's dad, Lee, played at Wichita State in his basketball days. You see Scooter about to check in for KU. 72 to 54. The Hawks kind of owning them right now. 4.33 to play. Coach, is it too late for the Cats to get a run? Well, it's late. There's no question about it. Uh, but the only thing they have left to do is, uh, is to play hard every play on the defensive end, to run it to the offensive end, try to get your shot as early in your offensive possession as possible, and get back. you got to gamble on defense a little bit, and when you gamble, you might get burned, but you have no recourse. Let's talk about the Big A standings here for a second. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri all tied on top coming in. KU will go to 9-3. and K-State, if the score stands up, will fall to 7-5. And, and Cat fans out there will talk about the two ball games in Ahern that the Cats lost, Oklahoma and Kansas. If they could have had one of those, things may be a little bit different down the stretch for them. Looking ahead to the Big 8 tournament and possible seedings for the tournament. If, if the Big 8 race ends up in a tie, the tie break procedure is head-to-head -head between the two or three teams that are tied, and then it's the team's records against the next highest-ranked team. Now, KU would be 2-0 against K-State. Missouri and K-State and Oklahoma and K-State, of course, still have to play. K-State down at Oklahoma and Missouri at K-State next Tuesday. And then it'd go down to Nebraska, Iowa State, Oklahoma State. So that loss that KU got down up at Iowa State this Tuesday could loom very big as far as the tiebreaker goes and the seeding in the tournament if Oklahoma can win up in Ames coming up this weekend, or next week, rather. Ross, well, I didn't get that. Could you repeat that? <laughs> I had it written out in, in advance. <laughs> Nobody understands it. I know it. Call me. I'll explain it to you. Coach, I want, I want to ask you this. A lot of Cat fans are thinking about it. You've been through it many, many years. How many wins do you think the Cats will need to get that at-large bid in the NCAA tournament? Oh, is Coach that's, Kruger thinking about that? That's hard to say. It really is. I think I think they're a, a contender for an invitation. Of course, they've got two more games left. and, and uh, If they could win those, of course, they'd be a, a big contender. Assuming they can't pull this one out, they've got two after that. If they could win those, they'd be a, they would be a strong contender for a, a large bid. Now, K-State had two victories over Division II schools, Coach. The committee is now throwing those victories out and kind of erasing the rest of the record. Does that hurt a little bit, too? No, it just, it, it, they just stole the Division II games out as they figure your record. So it doesn't help you, and it could hurt you a little bit. Richmond trying to get by Piper. He does, and Piper with another foul, and Chris will have to exit the ball game as Richmond has a chance for a three-point play. I think there's two players that really wanted this game bad for K-State. That one was Mitch Richmond, who had such a dismal game, and of course, Norris Coleman, who missed the free throw. 17 points out of Coleman, 22 from Richmond with a chance for the 23rd, and he's really played well here when things got a little bit of out, of, out of hand as we look at the replay. Well, I think a lot of Cat fans after the first ball game a little upset with the way Mitch handled himself late in the game, put up some shots that maybe Cat fans thought he shouldn't have, a little out of control, and, and you're right. I think you can tell that Mitch really wanted to come out and perform well tonight, and he's done it. He's played very, very well. Morris has played well, even though he's been down in there around the basket where it's been difficult to get the ball to him. It's Hunter Geldner, Scooterberry, Danny Manning, and Kevin Pritchard out there for the Hawks. 74-57, just over four minutes to play. This is Scooter. Backdoor cuts now. Kansas is going to be in a spread offense with a lot of backdoor cuts. As the, as the Wildcats have to be in a denial position defensively. And you're a little bit vulnerable to getting back cut and a layup. Lon Kruger wondering what went wrong tonight. Danny Manning. Scooter Berry the foul. Couldn't get it, although it was a heck of a try. And Richmond will take on Pritchard. Danny up to block it, and he was up a little too high. Richmond will get the hoop. 
Richmond closing in on his career best. He's got 25, his best is 29, way back against Grand Canyon. Here's a look at see the block. <laughs> Definitely on the way down. Back to action. Lynn Smith and Cedric Hunter, a collision under the hoop. That's goaltending back the other way. And Lynn Smith at 5'11 may not have another look at it. He was way up there and blocked out the layup of Cedric Hunter, plus committed the foul. Basket wouldn't have gone. It was kind of hanging on the rim. Lynn Smith got so high, he knocked it out of there. Goaltending, so two more for Cedric Hunter. 78-59 now. 3.37 to go as you get a good look at Cedric and then Larry Brown. 102 and 29, the college record of Coach Brown. Here at KU, 144-46 overall. Spent some time at UCLA. You get a kick out of Coach Brown, Jackie. It's such a big ball game for him. As you see some fighting for the ball, and Turgeon will get it to KU. And that is Jeff Gelder. As the crowd applauds noisily for that basket, the point I'm making is Coach Brown was watching the JV game before this game and rooting for him on his feet, signing autographs. You, you would thought that he was just another spectator here and not the coach worried about a big game against K-State. Well, at that point, there's not a great deal you can do. You might as well go ahead and enjoy the preliminary game. How many coaches can do that, though? Norris Coleman the slam. 19 for Coleman. 19 point lead. I think if we had to dissect this game and find one bucket that may have been the biggest bucket of the game so far was the three-pointer by Gelner right before the half. Lead well, was that, nine. That was a that was an important basket, obviously. I I can't think of any one basket. I just I recall that KU came out of the shoot so quickly and so hard. They've done a great job of getting all the loose balls tonight. They've been very tough and effective on the boards. And Kansas State has played well. It's just that Kansas University has played exceptionally well. Cedric Hunter wide open in the paint. Put it down to the floor. Manning and Geldner fought each other. Geldner the tip. He's got seven and that ties his career high. He also had seven against Notre Dame. They're not, they're doing everything right. Everything's falling for them. Norris Coleman. I just said that. 82-63. <laughs> this was just kind of running out now. Big win for KU. They move the basketball around and take your time. 46 of the Wildcats, 63 points, all but 17 of their points from Coleman and Richmond. Mitch Richmond, the foul on Scooter Berry, and look at him. He is just beat. This, is, this has been a very demanding ball game physically, and, and so far as they've been a lot of running up and down, and, it, and those kids have, have paid the price, and they've given their all on both teams. We've been talking an awful lot about Danny Manning tonight. Coach, I want to get your opinion. There's a sign up there that urges Larry Brown and Danny Manning not to go to the NBA. Just a hunch on your part. Will Danny stay next year or will he, will he head to the pros? Well, you keep hearing that he would like to play in the Olympics, which would require his staying in school for another year. I wouldn't be surprised if he stayed in college another year. They're singing the goodbye song here. Okay, you just pulled it out. Mitch Richmond still working. A lot of heart on this K-State basketball team. Very easy at this stage of the game just to say the heck with it. Not so. They're, as Coach said earlier, going to leave this one a lot of dignity. What a performance for KU. Coming off that loss at Iowa State, you thought they might be flat. This will help erase those bad memories of Ames. Cedric Hunter, the foul, over there against Steve Henson. A minute 11 to go. I believe you're going to see some 
goodbyes now. This is probably a moment that a few of these guys, there they go. See if we can get a shot of Mark Turgeon and Cedric Hunter leading the court. The hugs. Almost choked me up. Well, that's uh, an emotional event. Uh, those two kids have played so well here for so long, and uh, they're very great young men as well as great basketball players. 44 seconds. Henson continues to push it up. Challenging Pritchard. Pritchard the block, not the foul. As Danny Manning leaves the ball game. Of course, if he goes NBA, as some think he will, this will be his last game at Allen Fieldhouse. If not, he'll be back for many more. He leaves tonight with 33. As we told you, next up for KU at St. John's in New York this weekend. And next for K-State, Missouri on Tuesday night of next week at home. 33 seconds. Go ahead and put Milt Newton in the scorebook. Got a great shot of Mark Turgeon. Really choked up if we could get a shot of Mark. Really enjoying the final 16 seconds of his last game in Allen Fieldhouse. Standing next to Ron Kellogg, in fact, over there on the bench. Ron now the Topeka Sizzler player of CBA. And Mark isn't ashamed. He's crying over there. shake the hands KU from beginning to end tonight 84 to 67 and the streak continues here in Allen Fieldhouse 48 straight that ties the record they can break it with their first home victory the next season a victory that will have to come without Cedric Hunter and Mark Turgeon Improves to 20 and 7. The Cats fall to 17 and 8. Let's get final words. First of all, from Ross Dalton. Well, KU did exactly what they wanted to do. K State did let KU do exactly what they didn't want them to do. Get out quick, run the fast break, and they went to the boards hard, and that was the difference. Go K State. K State made one run, and that was it. I think Ross summed it up pretty well. You, what else can you say? Kansas played great. They played great basketball. They got out of the gate quickly, which is very important to get the crowd involved. Uh, that was the Kansas State's detriment, of course. But they, but they continued throughout. They had very few lulls in the game. They had they had a couple little lulls, but never of any duration. And they continued their play. They were consistent. I think the big thing is that they were very effective on the boards. They dominated the boards both offensively and defensively. All right. My thanks to both of you once again. We'll see you back again in Ahern when K-State hosts Missouri. My special thanks tonight to Dwayne Dupron, the SID at Kansas State, Larry Travis, athletic director, Doug Vance at KU, and Monty Johnson, the AD. There you see Mike Ferguson, our director, great job. Dick Siley, technical director, and the rest of the crew from Interlace, Gary Hess in charge. They've done a great job with us on the Kansas ball games we have done all season long. Trey Bender on stats, and Jeff Caius, our AD. It's been a good night for the Kansas Jayhawk fans here at Allen Fieldhouse. The final score once again, 84 to 67. For Ross Dalton and Coach Jack Hartman, I'm Steve Dennis.